Hi, I'm Tom Loya. I'm president of Homestead Incorporated, and we're introducing something new here, uh, sustainable space heating. This is the yellow heat burner. This is like a conventional oil burner. If you have a furnace or a boiler, this is what you have, an oil burner. Yellow heat is a substitute for the existing burner in your appliance, probably in the basement. And yellow heat is like a conventional burner, but it can handle any kind of of oil that you can obtain. Just as efficient on regular heating oil as a conventional burner, but it'll handle waste motor oil or it'll handle waste vegetable oil, which is the way we promote it. No preheating, no pre-cleaning required. If you can find that less expensive oil, just add it to the system, put it in through the input system here, and you'll get clean, safe, and cheap space heating. So let's look at the components of the yellow heat burner. Uh, it has a input system consisting of a stainless steel 60 mesh screen through a funnel directly into the fuel tank. Out of the fuel tank, there's an uptake system which does not draw from the bottom of the tank, which might have very wet or dirty oil, but rather from the top edge uh, through an automatic safety valve called a firematic, and then through a coarse strainer, not a filter, and into a uh, speed adjustable fuel pump. That delivers the fuel through a 100 watt uh, heat exchanger and from there it goes directly to the burner head, the Babington ball. Uh, other components on the standard system include a fuel gauge uh, possible to be hooked up through the internet to an app on your phone uh, and an air input system. You understand uh, this uses compressed air like most waste oil burners. Uh, we offer it with a very quiet a uh, compressor, a California compressor. Uh, you may already have a compressor that you want to use instead. Let's add some oil and show you how it works. This is the typical way that used vegetable oil is disposed of by a restaurant. It's pretty clean, but it does have some debris at the bottom of the container. But pour it in, it's easy as that. And if it goes through the screen, it works well. After you've poured in your oil for the day, see the sediment at the bottom of the jug. After you've poured in the oil and it has a chance to settle, then it's a good idea to clean the screen with paper towels so that oil doesn't sit on it for weeks at a time and actually polymerize and start to clog up the uh, screen. So let's look at maintenance. Maintenance is easy on the yellow heat burner, and I do encourage you as the owner of the burner to consider doing this maintenance yourself because it's non-toxic and safe done properly. So with each burner comes the only tool you're gonna need. It comes with the burner. And um, if you have a clean oil, you may have to do this once a month. If you have an oil that's unfiltered but has a lot of flour sediment in it, you may have to do it as often as once a week. To do this, you open up the burner when it's off, of course. You open up the burner. This is the sparker, the uh, igniter, as it's called. There are some springs underneath this cover. And if they get caught, you can push them a little bit. They come free. Okay? Then there's two steps to taking the electrodes out because the electrodes can build up some carbon and they may need to be cleaned with a paper towel. Two steps to taking them out. The first step is to unscrew the pressure fitting like this. Just a couple turns will do it. There we go. And that will come off and that's where the compressed air goes into the yellow heat burner. So that comes off with your fingers like that. There's a compressed air line. Second step is there's a knurled ring. This comes off with just finger pressure. It's no tighter than that. And uh, a few turns to take that off. And then the whole electrode and the burner head, the patented Babington ball burner head, they come out. And I'll show you that. So that comes off like that. And then the drawer, as it's called, wiggles out like this. There's the drawer. This is the patented Babington ball burner head, uncloggable burner head. Compressed air comes into the pipe 
and go exits from a very small hole. And the oil is a film that's dribbling across the surface of this ball. And when it gets near that jet, it's atomized into a very fine mist. And these white parts are the electrodes. They're the spark, 14,000 volt spark between them. And that ignites the spray or the mist of vegetable oil. To clean the electrodes, take the drawer and undo the one screw, a turn or two, that loosens up the electrodes, okay? Then you just, all you do is take a paper towel and you clean off any black, take it down to the, the white ceramic of the insulator and the standard metal, and then put it back together One, the uh, electrodes should be grasped so that the they're out in front of the Babington ball, but not at the very end because there's a lot of electricity there. And the ends of the electrodes should be a little bit farther apart than with a conventional oil burner, about three eighths of an inch apart. When you get it set up like that, oh, quite like that, then you can tighten the clamp. Okay, that goes back into the burner. Okay, the neural ring goes on, and this is only on finger tight. A few turns, like this. Finger tight, and then the compressed air line goes on. And we can tighten that up with the included tool. Like that. And then close the igniter and it's ready for reuse. So the yellow heat burner can be made to work in many furnaces and boilers. However, it needs to be installed and maintained by a competent person. In our state, we have to have a license to install the yellow heat burner. Um, it needs a proper chimney, it needs a safe appliance, and it needs good maintenance. So if you have questions about the yellow heat burner, uh, call us, write us, email us, and we can tell you uh, what the rules are and what would be appropriate. Yellow heat, cleaner, safer, and cheaper. Thank you.